Hi, Mike Moo here. Depending on which video you're seeing, uh, I may have already talked a lot about using a battery pack with the EcoFlow Wave that is not the battery pack that you can get with it. Now, just in interest of full disclosure, uh, this is not sponsored at all. I paid for my EcoFlow Wave over there with my own money. I was not sent anything for free or for review purposes. However, I did get in on the super early bird pricing that was available to anybody who joins their free Facebook group. All right, so just to jump over to the conclusion, I've tested a bunch of other battery packs, particularly with the Blue Yeti units, and then I did an Anchor unit, I did a third-party no-name brand unit, and I did a few other ones that are definitely not rated at all. I didn't even bother putting them in a video because they wouldn't even power on. So the ones that I did test, none of them worked. The only one that worked is the only EcoFlow battery pack unit that I own that is listed as capable. It's the very basic base unit that is available right now. It's called the EcoFlow River Pro. And you can get that one and the extended battery pack in order to use with it. Now, real world usage over here, using the AC output directly to the unit, I'm looking at roughly one hour for the R600, which is basically the EcoFlow uh, Pro River unit, and if you get the extended battery, that basically doubles it. So I'm looking at a real world usage of about two hours using that system. So that's really the only successful use that I've got out of it. But what you might find interesting is uh, how other battery packs kind of handle the way the EcoFlow uh, Wave handles the, the jump in the power supply and the, and the su supply power changes. Also interesting of note, is that when you have the unit plugged in with power, uh, the system internals itself use about five watts to 10 watts of power already. And that's just to power the electronic subsystems, which also power the Wi-Fi and maybe you know some other electronic Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Okay, so without turning it on, having it plugged in, you're already consuming five to 10 watts, right? It depends on the battery pack that uh, I plugged in testing what they report. Now, when you first power it on, it goes through a separate sequence of a soft start so it doesn't jump right in like a lot of dumb window air conditioner units use. So it's going to be a little bit easier for you on the battery. But on the negative side, sometimes it takes a little bit to power up. OK, and I've also noticed that when I have it unplugged fully for a period of time, it doesn't seem to retain the, the favorite settings that I had set before. So it requires me to go in there and adjust. Doesn't take very long, mind you, but it's still a little bit annoying, especially for testing purposes, which is what I did. It requires me to go in there and readjust the settings. So it'll start off at the highest temperature uh, that won't start the AC compressor, okay? Um, that's just something that I gotta go in there and manually adjust. And then also, I really prefer to use EcoFlow Wave in eco mode. And that's pretty much because it saves on the power usage. And that intelligently adjusts the compressor and the fan to produce a level of temperature that is already fairly comfortable versus when you're actually using it, you set a temperature. I mean, because it doesn't have a built-in thermostat per se. It's just an on and off mechanism for the uh, compressor. So it's basically pretty much always on, depending on what temperature they're going to be using. Now, this might not apply to you. I mean, you're using it pretty much uh, in the hottest environment you can, which is basically out in the desert, maybe, uh, in a car, which is basically just like an oven. Uh, you know, EcoFlow probably isn't gonna really be something that you want, especially if you already have plenty of power to go uh, for the unit. But if you don't, and a lot of people don't, because, you know, batteries are expensive and this does require up to, be, I believe, 600 watts of, of peak power, uh, which I, I never really completely achieved for a sustained period of time, uh, you know, that it's, it's something to consider. Okay. All right. Now, with that said, uh, I just showed a quick little video about the setup that I have, and I just basically have the a hot air exhaust ported out through my patio window, patio window slash door, and then the rest of it just operating uh, right there behind me. All right, let's get on with the video. Please do me a favor, give it a like, subscribe for more. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in any of the products that um, that I have in my description, please feel free to check them out. It doesn't cost you anything extra. They're all affiliate links. 
All right, thanks for watching. Again, this is not sponsored. I have here the Blue Eddy, I believe 700 watt model. I'm gonna power it on right now. And as you can see, I have close to 100%. I'm gonna power this on. That is the AC. And this should have power now. And I'm gonna proceed with pressing the power on. There it is. It is on, it is ramping up. If you can see, it's at 78 right now. It is in cool mode. And it takes a little bit to get started. So we're gonna ramp up really slowly, which is nice because this has, uh, you know, kind of like a soft start. It doesn't, it does not immediately uh, take up all the energy right away. Okay, so now we're hitting up 170, 170 watts right now. And I have the temperature set, actually that is the fan. Temperature set to 78, no. Temperature set, let's, let's just do maximum cooling here. All right, so we're doing 60 degrees Fahrenheit. It is right now 80 and I am uh, making sure it's in cold mode, cool mode. It's in the lowest fan setting right now. And we are consuming, well, it's 40 watts right now because it, it, the uh, compressor hasn't started up yet. Let me increase the fan speed. So at fan speed of halfway with the compressor not quite on yet, the unit is on, it takes a little while to get, get going. Uh, we are consuming 37, 38 watts. That's at half, half fan speed. I'm gonna move it to maximum, maximum fan speed. And we are getting close to, let's see, power that on. We're using 58, 60 watts. We're roughly using 60 watts. 61, 62. This is at maximum right now. 61, 62 to use the fan at maximum with the compressor not quite on yet. Okay. Start it up. It takes a little bit of time for it to go ahead and start up. Let's let's see in real world use what we're looking at here. Again, the temperature is set at 60 degrees. Now, I know the compressor isn't on yet because it is only consuming 62 watts. So in real time, um, how long it takes it to get going? I don't know if this is because of a safety uh, protect a compressor type of issue because I literally just moved this out of my test uh, my test room test office out here to the patio and it is the compressor is not powered on yet we're hitting a three minute mark roughly oh compressor just powered on I heard it water usage is now at 200 watts 190 and this is max blast okay 182, 187, it is starting to get a little cooler. I see this is going down to 78 degrees right now. Uh, I'm gonna turn down the fan to 50%. Oh, okay, it kicked out. It couldn't handle it. It cut the power. See this, it cut the power. So I think what happened was it just, it couldn't handle it. So maybe what I have to do is, uh, yeah, definitely can't handle it. Look at that. I couldn't handle it. I got the, the power reset thing here. It was just simply too much for it. So hopefully that answers your question on using a lesser power battery pack. You know what? Another thing I could probably test is to see whether or not if I don't use the maximum amount of power and I, and I switch the temperature I'm gonna switch the temperature over to, uh, let's not do 60. Let's do a comfortable, ooh, 86 is pretty hot. Uh, let's do a uh, 60, let's do a 69, which apparently is the uh, comfortable temperature for uh, sleep, ideal temperature. All right, I just heard the compressor power on. Let's see what's going on here. We're hitting 180, 187. 195, 200 watts. It's it's gonna be, it feels like it's gonna be steady 200 watts right now. 
Now, why it jumped off, I don't know if it's an issue with the Blue Eddy because clearly the Blue Eddy can handle. Oh no, it kicked right out. You know what? Potential issue with this. And you know what it says? It says there's a short. Now I know for a fact there's no short. There can't be a short. So it cut out because it thinks that there's a short. I don't know if that's true or not. Okay, so that, that's where we're at with the Blue Yeti um, on the EcoFlow. And uh, it, it's, it's not a short because I, I have this completely plugged in here. There's no short going on here. All right, next test up, we have the Anchor Powerhouse. I did a video about this. This was a really good deal. And it is uh, only 256 watt hours though. So, um, you know, I like this because it's really small, really compact, but it really isn't gonna give us enough power to keep the EcoFlow wave, e EcoFlow wave going very long. But, uh, you know, I'm gonna test it anyway. I'm at 99 watt, 99%, uh, and I have this light on. Hopefully that's not a problem. And as you can see, just plugged in, it claims it's doing 20 watts of power to the EcoFlow. The EcoFlow is not even on. It's just consuming 20 watts of power. All right. That could be, you know, I don't know, the Wi-Fi. I don't know what's going on with that exactly. I don't know if that's completely... Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Okay. So I just powered on EcoFlow. And we're going we're gonna to see what's going on here in the display. This, again, is the Anchor link on the screen. Anchor Powerhouse. It is starting out at 34 watts. Just like before, it takes a little while to start start it up. And I have it at half fan speed. Okay, I just heard something. It, I think it started, but it couldn't get going. So I'm not exactly sure what happened there. So we are still at 20, 22 watts. I think it started to run the compressor, but then it failed. I don't think this is going to be able to power it up. Again, this is the Anchor Powerhouse, 256 watt hours. Okay, wait, wait. I hear the compressor coming on. It is starting to ramp up now. The compressor is on, the fan is going. I see the temperature. Okay, compressor's on. It's consuming 130 watts, 153, 194. I think if it sticks around the 200 watt mark, then I think we're gonna be okay. No, 176 watts. It is on. It is cooling down, getting 75 watts about, I mean, 75 degree Fahrenheit coming out right now. Okay, now we're consuming 215, 200, 239, 246. It looks like at this, it's gonna run it at roughly, looks like I'm gonna only get 0.7 hours. Let's say realistically half an hour out of the Anchor Powerhouse. And keep in mind, this is actually a, I believe when I got it, it was roughly $200, uh, $200 roughly for 250 uh, watt hours. So we're looking at 0.6 hours and it is consuming roughly three, two, oh, 290 watts. It kicked out, it couldn't handle it. Something happened. Something happened, the compressor stopped. Uh, it, couldn't, it could not handle the load on this, uh, on this unit, unfortunately. So we're gonna have to say that this is roughly a fail because uh, this battery pack I hear the fan going on, on on this battery pack. Was not able to keep and sustain uh, the power coming out of here. So next up, we're gonna we're gonna try another battery pack. I'm gonna power this off right now, and the next one up is going to be EcoFlow's own River Pro. All right, we're gonna check out the River Pro. Yeah, it could not keep the compressor going. All right, for this test round for the EcoFlow Wave. I am plugging this into the EcoFlow River Pro. Now, as you can see, there's only 97% charge left, and that's because 
I've been charging my e-bike outside, but I think this is going to be enough to run a test. If, it, if it's going to be continuously able to run and operate, then I think uh, I think that'll be positive. Now, this has something called the, I believe it's called the X-Boost. And X-Boost mode means it's going to be able to handle the uh, the surge and power requirement that this this uh, EcoFlow Wave might have. Okay, so that's kind of unique for this one. So, but that really is for uh, electronic devices that don't have like IC chips and stuff. I think EcoFlow does have IC chips, so this may or may not work out. All right, so I'm gonna power this on now, and let's see what we're what we're using up. We're not using any power because I did shut this guy down. Now I'm gonna go ahead and power it on now. Power on EcoFlow Wave. Come on. Power, power, power. Did, did I did I power it on? No, I didn't. All right, power. Okay, it's on now. All right, it's on now. And looks like it already uses just in standby power. Interesting. So it's standby power, it's using about seven watts according to uh, according to my EcoFlow River Pro. So if you keep it plugged in, it's because it powers on all the stuff in there and the Wi-Fi, maybe. All right, just power it on. We're gonna slowly ramp up once again. This is going at uh, 10 watts right now. I hear it's, it's on, there's no fan going on yet. Okay, now it's, now it's officially on. I guess there's a little standby mode and then it powers on. But even with this on, it takes a little while before the fan starts ramping up. So this time I'm going to do, again, half way mark. And uh, the, the cooling, I heard it turn on, but now, oh, that's right. I got to lower the temperature. Let's do 68 degrees. All right, 68 degrees. Now it's, now it's really officially on. I feel the fan on. We're starting up, we're ramping up at 30 watts, 32, 34, 37, 45. Feel the fan coming on pretty quickly now. 54, 56, 55. I still, I still only feel the fan on right now, but it's, it's still running. Starting to ramp up a little bit, very slowly. So this, this uh, definitely has a, a nice soft start to it. So again, the fan is only running halfway mark right now, and that is consuming 40, 50, 50 watts roughly. I'm gonna move this up to maximum fan, so I think the river flow can handle it. So, uh, because this, oh, here we go, powered on, ooh. I saw it ate up 400 watts right away. It, did, it jumped to 400 to get the compressor starting. I think that's what's killing it for the other uh, power packs that I've tested so far during this test run. Now we're running at 240, 250, 260. I'm at max fan. Looks like I'm really gonna get between one and two hours out of this on the River, River, uh, River Pro, EcoFlow River Pro. We're hitting 280 watts right now. You know what? I'm going to turn down the fan because I'm right here. It's going to be really loud. I'm going to turn down the fan a little bit. That only affects the fan. It doesn't affect the compressor. So you can see the compressor is going down. And uh, because of that, I get roughly two hours out of the... Uh, between one and two hours, maybe around a two-hour mark, out of a fully charged EcoFlow uh, Pro. So... I'm guessing real world estimate, we're gonna hit maybe about, yeah, it's gonna be one between one and two. Keep in mind, it is only 80 degrees here right now, and the temperature has dropped down to 73. I am going to drop the temperature down to the minimum, see if that affects anything. That may not affect anything. And keep in mind, the draw is gonna be higher when it's hot, like really hot. Right now, it's 80 degrees right now. So it looks like I'm, it's, it's pretty steady at around 250, 260, 262. Yeah, it, it looks like I'm going to be able to get enough out of this to get roughly an hour, at least an hour, okay? An hour, maybe two. 
Now, if that means that if I get the, I know someone asked this before, but if you get the EcoFlow River Pro and then you add on the auxiliary battery pack, you're, gonna, you're basically effectively doubling the amount of time that you're gonna have. So EcoFlow Pro River plus the extra battery pack will get you roughly about how much this system would get. So I think this is gonna be better than that. But you know what, I'm gonna test that. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna bring the battery pack in here and plug it into the EcoFlow Pro, okay? And it's roughly around the same 94 percentage percentile. We'll see roughly how, how much time we get on once I get that pack hooked up, okay? Yeah, so it's only been running for a little while now on an EcoFlow River Pro. It's doing 68 degrees. Running a full blast. We're outputting 500 watts now, 516 watts, 520. So we're not getting the hour at full blast, not at full blast. It's, it's dropping down dramatically, so you might get up to an hour. But the very fact that it actually works is pretty interesting because technically you could have this guy, uh, the EcoFlow River Pro, charging at the same time via solar. So that's pretty nice, actually. And you know, it's it's it does feel like it's getting the 60, 60 some degrees temperature down. So we're looking at 39 minutes, 40 minutes or so. And I move down the fan to one half. I have this plugged in. I don't think that when it is on that we are getting the uh, the updated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to I'm gonna power this off and I'm gonna power this back on again. See, technically. So apparently I have an issue with my EcoFlow unit. I have two of these. One of them doesn't show the battery icon. So that was the problem. So continuing with the test again, this is at 84% and I have it on. No, I don't have it on yet. I'm gonna power it on. There we go. Now I'm gonna power the EcoFlow river no, Eco Flow Wave on. Let's see. There we go. It is now on. We're starting it up again at the 23 second mark. I gotta set the temperature low. Let's do it 60 degrees. Let's make sure it's on fan mode, and let's do it right smack in the middle in terms of the uh, the fan speed. Everything else. Running here, we are at 84%. Compressor just started. We're hitting up 218 watts, 220, 234, 236. We are going, 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 and going up. So now we are at yeah, we're getting up there. It looks like we're gonna get four hours. So at four hours, we're gonna get roughly about two hours at maximum. So at maximum cooling capacity for the EcoFlow Wave, we are getting gonna be roughly two to two and a half hours. So that is pretty close to the, uh, the Wave battery itself. But look at the problem though. You have the EcoFlow Wave, right? This already is heavy. Then you add on the EcoFlow Pro, River Pro, and you know, this is a whole other thing. And then on top of that, you got the expansion battery, which is yet another whole other thing too. So you got three pieces to lug around, which is okay if you're gonna, I mean, you, you get the benefit of all the extra USB ports, right? You got a USB-C output of 100 watts. You got two regular USB-A ports. You even have a QC2 or three fast charge you got the dc plugs here and then you guys also have ac output over here and you get solar charging at the same time so it's it's a pretty decent nice compromise if uh you know you're you're, you're out camping and you want to be able to charge your unit at the same time that's that's not too bad so if you already have this system just keep in mind it's going to work roughly about two hours to three but you know, you, you get the solar input right over here. It's gonna be between two and three hours, roughly, because this will ramp up 
to 400, maybe up to 500 watts. And we have 1400 watt hours on here. So, you know, you're, you're getting up to two, between two and three hours. So I think this is the pretty close to the equivalent of having the wave battery down below, which I don't have, but I get the flexibility of the USB ports, the light, uh, the cigarette and 12 volt output, plus sine wave output and solar charging on the go. Get all of that. For whatever reason, the slow AC input actually bumps up to 400 and 500 some watts while, while it's plugged in and running the EcoFlow wave. I don't know why. That's a real shame that I couldn't get Blue Eddy to work. I don't know what's going on. I could have a battery that is starting to die. I guess I'll reach out to Blue Eddy support and see what they say. Now, with that said, the, I'm pleasantly surprised that the EcoFlow River Pro works as well as it does because that's what I have right now. I don't have the Max or the Pro or any of the other ones, and so I can't really do those tests. If I do one day get come across one of the battery packs or the battery sled for the unit, then uh, you know I'll throw in some testing in there as well. But uh, overall, I think the River Pro works out just fine. I already use the River Pro in my SUV to power my fridge and also serve as auxiliary power for my dash cams. So you know it'll work just fine in there, especially if I'm traveling and I actually do want AC. Uh, on the go during the summer. So that's what I'm going to be testing and if you are interested in more stuff about this please let me know down below. Let me know what you think. Uh, put some comments, put some questions, maybe I'll put together another frequently asked questions video for this and uh, hopefully this was useful to you. Please give it a like, subscribe for more and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Oh one more thing. If you hear a little bit of the sound, that's actually the EcoFlow wave running in eco mode out there right now, except the difference is I have it outside, so it's not as loud. But I think that if I were to get a new hose, I'd probably get one of those noise reduction baffle hoses that will reduce the sound that comes in so I can have the AC running in the background while I'm filming videos or doing phone calls or something like that. All right, that's it.